Hello. I hope this is working. Um, I can't seem to hear anything except my own voice. Hello, all together. And I do. Have... Oh, okay. Now I think it's working. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your well, webinar. Well, my name is Werner. I will answer all your questions and um, yes. Enjoy that webinar. I'm looking forward to it too. Great. All right. So uh, hopefully this is working. Um, we will be doing the intro to venue sites. This is more of a 3D visualizer for Pandora's box. We'll be covering how to run it in with Pandora's box, but I will not be doing anything on 3D modeling itself. That is an entire project in itself that uh, would take hours to go into. This is more of if you already have the 3D models and how to use it inside um, Pandora's box. So let's see. How to start. All right, so what I'll start with is the first thing I did was we're going to do it as if we were running a live show. Uh, I built a stage and I kind of built a show as if I were running a bunch of LED screens uh, for a live performance, such as a, a music. Uh, so what I, all I did was um, I built a show, I brought down three players, uh, renamed them with an iMag and a center screen, split LEDs and a runway. They're all different, Just uh, I think it's a quad player, a dual player and a single compact player. Um, I built it the way I normally do. I color coordinate everything. Layers one, running the camera one. Um, layer two and, or three and four running to cameras, camera two and, and, and so on. So they're all color coordinated. Big thing I do is I name the outputs. This will become very important later. You'll see why, but I definitely label uh, name all the outputs to what they are going to. It makes life much easier in a bit. Same with all, all players. So um, the uh, first thing we'll do is we will look at all cameras and we'll go to the sequence of content that I made. This is the content now sending content to every screen. Um, they're all layer, they're all routed. So only layer one is going to camera one. So if we go to output, uh, if we go to camera one, we'll see it's only what's being fed to camera one. Um, so that is, is, is if we were running a show. So now how we do with a 3D visualizer. So this would be if we're running a show. So go to your uh, device types venue and drag venue down to your devices. You'll see I added it here. So now it, it opens up. Um, I have a different sequence for this. The, um, let's see. Oh yeah, so the first thing I did was I brought in on one layer a stage model. So if I go to my camera for the visuals for the venue, you'll see there's the 3D model that I brought in. This is the stage that I created before this. Um, and then what I ended up doing was just layering or naming every layer in here what uh, what screen it is. So if I go and look at, uh, let's say center circle, I have a 3D model for that. I can take the center circle, bring it in, and now I have that. And you can go through and do the whole thing all the way down, which I'm not going to run through because it's time consuming. And so I've already done it. But where venue sites is really, really interesting is you can where it becomes useful is. For your media, you can actually. Route an output to it. So this is why I said naming your outputs was very important because now I named an output center circle. So now if I route it there, now anything that goes um, to that screen will be automatically routed to here. So when you're running the show, you will see this 
here and you can do it across all screens. Now, since I've already done it before, I can go through and now all the screens have all that content that I had built previously routed to each screen. So this becomes very useful for how I've used it is for working with lighting designers when they really want to see what their color palette looks like. You can actually build a stage here and see what it looks like. Of course, you can pretty it up. I added a layer, put a little smoke PNG to add a, add a ground. And if we go through and uh, play the content, you can see there all the content plays. So all we're doing is routing every output from here into, visual, in, into the visualizer so we can see exactly what is being, the manager is telling every player to do. Where it becomes also very useful and very fun is if, when you want to see other parts. Um, you do have a 3D camera that you can use and move all through the 3D model and track it. So right now I'm just looking at a stationary view. But what we can do is we go to configuration, turn on the camera so we can see what it looks like. We come back. Oh, hold on, there we go. We can actually see where the camera is and what it's pointing at. So you can see already program movements via keyframing, and that's what the camera moves. How you do that is, again, in your camera, go through, you have your viewpoint, which is the camera itself, and you have the target, which is where it is looking. And you just do your basic keyframe editing. In your camera, and it runs. So now if we want to, we can just select the camera and it will follow through all the pre-programmed movements. So we can fly through the stage and see what it looks like at all positions. This is very useful for, like I said, especially designers or in just visualizers to see what the stage will look like with certain pieces of content. Where I have found it useful is uh, not only offline programming, but offline training. If you have a new operator coming in and needs to know what's going on, they um, can see exactly what is happening through every screen, especially if the screens are in different rooms or a very complex building. The other way I've used it too is not just actually uh, movements like this, but program positions to where if you need to see certain screens at certain times of the show. So if only your, your iMeg screens are live, you can jump to that or jump to your other iMeg screen or jump to the center screens that becomes very useful or looking down straight down above at another screen that's on the stage. It becomes very useful for, um, for that kind of thing. Uh, Werner, is there any questions yet? Are there any questions yet? Yes. Um, do we need the content to be all in the manager in order to preview? To do it this way, yes. All the content will need to then that is one thing to be very aware of. If you are running all 4K screens, this is not the most ideal way to run it because, well, system resources, you're not gonna be able to play uh, 16 4K videos on your manager at once. Uh, it's, it's gonna bog it down. Uh, you can make uh, proxies of it, make them a little smaller. Um, or one thing you can do is if you're jumping to screens like this to where any screen not being used, you can actually remove. So that way you're only previewing screens that you need to see. That's typically how I did it. So when I would jump from, when I jump to the house right iMeg screen, I would just take your, the house left and remove it because it's not being needed. It's not needed. So that saves up on system resources. But yes, to do it this way, everything needs to be on the manager that is running venue sites. I will get to another way later where you don't need to do it. That is just this this way. Cool, thank you. Is that the only question? Not so far, thank you. Ah, great. All right, so that is basically a very quick run through of how to do one way of this. Um, 
and it, it like I said, it's very useful, very basic once you learn it, and it's super easy. If you want to get to another way that uh, what I've jumped into is first, let me turn that timeline off. Is for theaters. Well, I got a stray going somewhere. All right. So um, my background is most a lot of live theater or a lot of yeah a lot of live theater. So this one is very useful for me. This one's the same thing. Um, very useful if you uh, want to get viewpoints of where the audience sees what the audience can see from different places so you can go from the front to the back to house left if you want to go up to one of the balconies you can really see what your viewpoints are um that's if you have a very accurate model of your your theater the other thing that's really useful in this too is you can actually control it via widget like you would a layer if you were doing automation tracking. So if you were tracking, if you're getting feedback from automation for your automation moves, we can actually sit there and track automation pieces as if as as if you were a, a screen. So when a screen moves too, we can track this all in a virtual just as you would live on uh, a live show. which becomes very, very, very useful. Now, the one thing I will say that is very useful when you get into this, the first thing I typically do is when you're doing camera movements, actually just right when you get into the camera, um, the default field of view is very low. I think it's something like under 10, uh, 10 degrees. The Human eye is something like a 150 degree field of view, but because we have two eyes and how our brain does it, we we don't have fish eye. So if you do 130 in here, you get a really like uh, um, GoPro fish eye look to it. So I usually get it around 100 to 110. I think this was 113. It gives you a close view of what the human eye sees, but it's not too fish-eyed so it's you just got to kind of find where um you know where where you're happy with that between the fish eye and the actual view of what a human can see so but that is the, the one way you can do or yeah the one way you can do the live stage and little things you can do with the live theater as far as automation tracking and Basically, anything you see out on stage, you can bring back and see an actual physical representation of it. Um, so that is a quick run through on live. Next, we will go to, as far as a 3D visualizer for uh, other uses, uh, more decorative, more, uh, just more pretty, I guess we can say. Any other questions yet? Um, yes. Um, oh, which yeah. programs for the 3D models are you using or do you recommend? Uh, there's a bunch of them out there. Of course, most of them are incredibly expensive, like Cinema 4D and everything. But a good one is Blender. Blender is free. As They ask that you give a donation because it's open source and everything. But Blender is free. Blender is a great one. And also, there is a huge user base of forums online that can teach you everything you need to know. Blender is a great resource to have. So I've, I've created almost all of mine. So um, this, even this stage was created purely in Blender. Every screen and the stage itself took about 20 minutes to build in Blender. Very easy, just watch your tutorials. That, that YouTube, YouTube University is great. Um, one more question. Uh, yeah. Is there a way to see 3D objects shadow created by a projector to evaluate um, prior positions? Not sure. I mean, create a, uh, a I'm sorry, what was it? Not sure I understood. 
I think we can go through this later. I, I don't know if I got this question right. So um, let's answer this question just shortly after the webinar, then I will show it to you. Um, we'll ask him again. So, All right. I mean, it's casting shadows. I mean, like we're going to get into that. That's the, like, how to pretty up the, like, this is just a rough visual visualization of the screens of what you're doing of rough movements. The next one's going to be to where we can pretty it up and make it look a little nicer for a presentation. Cool. Thank you. So, like I said, the next one we will go to is, all right, this was the one I like using this one just because I have a lot of experience with the Chinese theater in LA, the big one where everyone puts their hands, all the celebrities put their hands in cement. So you can see this one. Um, let me turn the cameras back on. So this is the 3D model of the Chinese theater. Um, I actually created the uh, the content so it actually looks like it in real life, um, just to kind of give you a nice representation of it. But this is basically if you scan the building, uh, colored the map to look like this, this is what you have. But it's very flat, very, I mean, it's a good representation, but it's not very interesting. So. One of the cool things that I really, really like to do is add light sources. Light sources cast shadows and reflections. It's really interesting what you can do, and it's super easy once you know how to do it. Um, the first thing uh, you do is in um, your device, if you right click, you can add a device and you can add a light. It's that easy. And what happens is you can see at the very bottom, it adds a light. Now I've added three because I wanted to use three lights for this building because actually I know how they light the, the forecourt from it and it's basically three floodlights. They have a little more decorative lights, but it's basically lit from that. And then what you, once you do that, in there you place a piece of content of what you want the light to be. The light, you can add gobos, you can add pretty much patterns into it. I just did a little soft blur so it looks like a, a soft floodlight. But yeah, if you have, uh, we have in our stock content, we have a bunch of gobos. You can add gobos and the light will cast a gobo. <clears throat> Once you do that, whatever layer you want to control, we'll do this too. So I'm using the, the building. This, the the uh, layer one uh, is the one that has the building and the content for the, the paint of it on it. What you have to do is then go to your effects, type in light. And we have a bunch of different lighting effects. Uh, because I added three lights, I use the three light effect. Take that, drag it right down onto your layer. So you can see this is the layer with the model and the content PNG. And I brought in that, uh, the uh, lights. Now these are usually blank. To, to basically do that, because you can have multiple light sources, when you right click, you share a texture, you just select what light you want in being, excuse me, being used here. You have multiple lights you can select. Uh, if you add six lights, you can go through and add different ones you want to use and, and, and do all that. So once you select all three, you have, of course, your mix. You have cast and receive mode. So if it only casts light or it only it absorbs light, receives, you can play, you know, I won't go out, you can play with that. Uh, same with all your settings, softness, diffuse, ambient lights. You can you can play with all of those. Uh, they're very self-explanatory, very easy. And then what happens is what I did with here was I put the lights in one at a time, and you can see now you can see the depth. You can see now a light coming from over here, casting, hitting here, casting shadows on there, front. And now look at the difference from just that to that looks much prettier and looks a lot more realistic. To place your lights, you do the exact same thing you do what you did with your cameras. You go into configuration, you can actually view your lights and let it. Of course, these are floods, so they are very large, but you could see the same thing if you look you have a light and it's target. So if we go into the lights and uh, let's move 
I didn't, this is where I didn't mark them. This is my fault. You do these, you can see, now you can see there's the light moving and, or the target, you can move the target. And now if we go through and turn that off, so you can see, now you can see, uh, if we move the target, there you can see the light moving on that. Let's, very you know very pretty the other cool thing you can do is if you are going to gel the lights you can actually get your gel rating and color add color so each one can be a different color whatever color you need again you have different controls of the light very self-explanatory your angle your aspect your role so if you're doing gobos you can do gobo rolls fun stuff like that um if you want to harden or soften it of course it's all the same stuff any questions on that so far yes um yes. is there a possibility to integrate a camera output viz to external applications like wya you know this thing I oh what you see is what you get thanks uh <laughs> That is something that we'd have to answer later in the forums or on the comments, because I honestly do not know. Okay, cool. We discuss later. Yes, Thank that you. is something that we can discuss later. Just, again, I definitely, uh, Pandora's box is in years of using this and it's incredibly versatile. I do not know everything. There's still a lot of stuff that I do not know and I'm learning every day as well. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you. Is that the only one? So far, yes. Okay, great. Now, the other thing too is um, I added a ground layer. It's the same thing. It is a smoke PNG that I uh, just softened and made it look more like concrete in a way. But the same thing I did is I went and added the lights to this layer as well. That way, if you look closely, you can oh wrong way sorry you can see that there are shadows cast as well onto the ground so creates a little more realistic depth to that as well so it's not just a flat image and then what i did was i took the content that we used for the actual mapping and added it on here so that if you play it you could see the lights dim down and the new con and the show content plays. Now to show a client what this looks like too is I did the same thing as before. I went through and pre-programmed camera movements. So as the content is playing, you can see we are looking at all different places around the forecourt. So the way I built this, you can see instead of routing layers to the uh, visualizer from other from the other players, I just built I just built it directly in the visualizer itself. Uh, so that way you create a visualizer without having to build an entire show. You can actually just you can see I built this whole thing with just the three D layer, the content layer, and the ground. And the fun part is if you really want to get fun with it, you can really pretty it up and add a dog, some plants, a T-800 Terminator, add whatever you want. And when, it's, when you program all your movements, you have everything you want and you think it looks good, a very good useful thing that I've used quite a few times. If you go to tabs, go to audio and video export. You see it comes up in here. You can type in an in and out point of your timeline that you want to render out. Go through, select where you want it to go, select all your encoder settings and hit encode. And it will encode the exact timeline that you have specified. So that way I can have an exact video of all the camera movements, what it looks like and everything done, rendered out into a file and send to a client or to a friend of what you built or whatever, whoever needs to see it.
Is there, are there any other questions? Yes. Can this all be done um, in the offline manager? Um, I would assume so, but I don't know. I don't have an offline. I actually have never worked with an offline manager. Uh, again, that's something that we could answer, uh, answer in the form. I honestly have never used one. I don't know. So we will find this out later. Oh, I, I got an answer from, from a colleague. Yes, we can. Yes, you can do this in okay, good. offline manager. Great, well. that's good. Thank you, I, like I said, I assume so, but I didn't want to give out wrong information. But so that is the two ways that I have, or yeah, the two ways that I have run um, uh, venue venue sites is uh, patching or routing all your servers to the venue site and then create it that way, and then or just build it directly as you would a show inside the venue site as a visualizer. Depending on your needs, you can do it, you know, either way. But be aware if you do it the first way, where you're routing, do be uh, mindful of your system resources. If you are doing it that way, you do not want to bog down your manager uh, if you're running, you know, 16 4K video clips at once on it. Um, just not a pretty sight. But if there are no other questions, that's really a quick introduction to venue sites. If we want, if you guys want us to go deeper and do more stuff with it, more complex, feel free to put requests in because like I said, this was just an intro. Uh, it's a very complex system you can go very deep into and have a lot of fun with. Um, there are actually no more questions for the public. I think we will stay on for another 10 minutes because there are a few. Yes. Um, incoming questions as well. So we do everything without the cameras later on. So we will stay on for a little more and uh, answer everything else. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. And I hope it was uh, useful. Thank you too. See you soon for the next webinars.